want to see what happens. Yes. Yeah, yeah they are. Attendees Perfect. Coming in. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Well, welcome everybody. We will get started. Um, hopefully nobody had any issues coming in. We've got people coming in right now. So that is great. We'll give everybody a couple of minutes to kind of join in here. In the meantime, I would love to know where everybody is from. So go ahead and throw it in your chat, whereabouts you are from. And I know we have Canada. We've got Toronto, Canada. We have Austin, Texas, if I'm right with the That's Austin. Right. And then we have Denmark all on here. So Holly is in Denmark and she will be joining us. She'll be stateside in a week, well, less than a week, joining us all over that. So yeah, everybody go ahead, throw in the chat where it is that you're from. Um, oh, there's a hand raised, so maybe chat is not enabled. Chat is disabled. Thank you, Sandra. So let me try to think. That's funny. The last, I was just on a Lysio webinar and came over and it was the same thing. The it's, chat was disabled there. It started happening on our webinars as well. For what it's worth. I think it's a Zoom settings change. And I, you know what? And that's cool. Thank you for that because I'm like, is this really me? Am I, I mean, I do Zoom webinars all the time and to get in and all of a sudden be like, really, I forgot to do that. Yeah, it um, almost felt weird. I almost just text Ben my address. <laughs> hey Ben, Toronto, Ontario. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. So give me a moment here while everybody's still coming in. Let me try to figure out how to enable the chat. And if somebody else knows in the meantime, like, did you guys figure out how to enable yeah, the chat? It's, like if you go to the chat, the arrow just next to it should have, there's an option. It's like allow people to chat with, and then it's like attendees versus. Yeah. Like, mine just says show chat previews. Okay. Are you the organizer? Is I'm Leanne the organizer? I'm supposed to be the organizer. Maybe it's, I'm not. It's Maybe. definitely Tanya because okay. I log into hers to fix everything. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know, um, Leanne, do you have a different option above the chat? Because that's the first place I looked. And it just says show chat previews. And when I open chat. <laughs> yeah, that's also all I see. Yeah. And it's no, uh, only us. That's why most... nobody's typing in where they're where they're from, because it's still only us. Can you make me co-host on you? Oh, here we are around with it. Can chat with. Oh, perfect. Attendees can chat with everyone. Panelists can chat with anyone. Okay, so if anybody is out there, um, it was it's either if you don't see it where Ben saw it, now you have to open the chat, and then in the chat under the very bottom, it'll default who to send a message to someone. There's a pull down there, so it could be on one of many places. Anyway, we're open. So yes, let's see where everybody is. We've got Sterling. I know who that is. We've got Red Deer County in Alberta. Um, Pakistan. Wow, we've got some from Pakistan, Vancouver, Tabor, Alberta, Surrey, BC, Massachusetts, MA. That's Massachusetts as well, right? In the States, MA is Massachusetts. Yep. Yeah. So, Natick, Massachusetts. So, that's awesome. Burlington, Ontario. So, yeah, we've got a really good, really good mix here. So, that's awesome. So, we're just going to jump right in. I will we'll do the introductions. This is fireside chat style. So it's going to be very open, very conversational. If anybody has any questions to keep it easier, rather than having us go back and forth between the chat and Q&A, chat, we'll use the chat for if you just kind of want to do, you know, I don't know, responses to something that you like, chat with other people in there. If you actually have Q&A for anybody here, please put that in the Q&A because that's where we'll actually watch. So your question may not get seen if it's in the chat because sometimes the chat goes by very, very fast. So just housekeeping rule on that. So we'll do that. Um, and so we are here today. So myself, I am Tanya Hiltz, a certified professional bookkeeper and accredited impactful advisor, founder of Cloud Business Services and Tanya's Bookkeepers Bootcamp. And we are here with Kinga Jasek. Did I pronounce that right? Jasek or Jasek? Jasek, Jasek, Jasek. I, I pronounced your first name right. We, she's it just depends Kinga. what country you're in at this point, you know? <laughs> there we go. Okay, well, Kinga. Add, I will add that I'm a little bit under the weather. This is not my normal voice, but I mean, we have Polly here as well. Hi, Polly, who's going to definitely 
definitely be coming in to help and save me today. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, so yes, Polly and Kinga are both from Cinder and Polly's energy. Polly and I go back probably almost longer than Kinga and I go back, I would say. So I know, surprise, surprise on the business importer, which I've got actually 5,000 things being imported through business importer as we're speaking too. But um, Polly has just as much energy as Kinga. So yeah, she is here to be the energy person on that. And then we have Ben who does very, very well surrounded by a group of women. <laughs> so, and a group of Canadians, I should and add. Group of, well, Can well, I guess there's, yeah, three of us lands quietly there, but yeah. Um, and Ben is from Keeper and Keeper is taking the accounting world by storm. I guess is probably the best way to say it because there is like Keeper. We'll get into all of this, but um, yeah, there's Keeper and Cinder's got some amazing changes coming up. And the one thing that I love about both of these apps um, in the people um, as well too, I absolutely love the people. When Kinga actually called and said that, you know, or I heard that she was talking to Ilya, I'm like, oh my God, you have to, you absolutely have to. Ilya, Polly, amazing team. There's more people on the team. I just go back further with Ilya and Polly. But, and then Ben is, again, listens, very interactive. And, you know, anybody that spoke to Ben just knows that he just really wants to make it work. And we're going to see some big changes um, come out for both a lot of Canadian changes. And as Ben said, when Ben and I were chatting the other day um, in Toronto, he's like, if I can make this work for Canada, the rest of the world is really easy. And I'm like, I absolutely love that because that is so true. So Americans, you guys have it really, really easy compared to us and Benjamin digging in. I'm sure he'll totally agree, but that's it. If you guys can get the app working for Canada, the U.S. is just ridiculously easy, and then you can get to all the other VAT countries out there. So I thought that was absolutely brilliant, Ben. So you definitely, not that you needed to earn brandy points, but you definitely earned brandy points with me for that. Well, thank you. I think so, uh, uh, we're honored to be here. Um, I'm sure I can speak uh, uh, on behalf of, uh, I guess, well, uh, Kinga and Polly kind of organized this, but I'm honored to be included. <laughs> um, so thank you. Absolutely happy to have you included. And I think this really speaks a lot for what we do. We are such a collaborative industry by nature, you know, maybe not so much, uh, you know, two decades ago, but these days we are. And I love it when we see the apps collaborating. So let's go in and I will give you guys a moment to talk a little bit about your app. And we will go with Ben first and Keeper for a few reasons. Alphabetically, he comes first with Ben and with Keeper. And of course, you know, anybody who knows the girls and the guys, you know, you might get lost once the girls start talking. So you can go first, Ben. Tell everybody about Keeper. Thank you. Um, and I've seen a, a couple of customers uh, flow through the chat. So I know at least some people uh, on uh, on this webinar are familiar. Uh, so in short, Keeper is a month-end clothes manager. It connects directly to your client's QuickBooks or Zero file. And it allows you to organize your work and then do that work. Uh, so the unique part about us being able to connect to your client's accounting ledger means that we can pull in all of your client's transactions, all of their vendors, their chart of accounts, their core financial statements. And we can allow you to run a month-end review directly inside Keeper, uh, spot potentially misclassified transactions, correct them directly inside of Keeper, communicate with your clients in a custom-branded client portal, and once you are finished running your clothes, also generate management reporting at month end that goes beyond just the profit loss balance sheet and cash flow. Yes. And it's, it's, you've got some really, really cool features that we can, you know, if we've got a chance, we'll get into them. If not, you guys just have to go to the booth at Scaling New Heights to find out about it or connect. But there's some, I'm actually sitting there trying to, Every, one feature a week just to go in, dig in, see if I can break it, let Ben know if I've been able to break it or my thoughts on them. I send him a little loom love videos um, type of thing. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's, there's some really cool stuff in there. That's all I'm going to say on that. Cause again, you've got to reach out to find out. Um, all right. So thank you, Ben. And if, if just while we're waiting, if anybody wants to throw in the chat, who is using Keeper or Cinder right now? I'd love to see um, just that combination. So while you're hopefully being able to enter into the chat, who's using 
sender or keeper. Kinga or Polly, who, which one of you guys wants to speak up and talk about what Cinder does and why I people should start and then Polly can add on if I run out of oxygen. <laughs> so essentially, and kind of where I went with this at Get Connected, if you guys were any at the Canadian events, is that if you have any clients that use an e-commerce platform, such as um, Shopify, Etsy, Amazon, or if you have any clients that use a payment provider like Stripe, Square, PayPal, we take all the manual work from all the, everything that gets, <laughs> yes, Steve, sorry. I just, from everything that comes in, um, into the account. So essentially, and we have been updated for Canada. So we are able to pull in the tax. We're also able to separate them. We're able to adjust currencies um, and we pull that all in and then, essentially in the end integrate it into your quickbooks or zero accounts and that's like my high level pitch probably anything you want to add into that yeah you nailed it perfectly yes yeah, so we kind of are responsible for data transfer so that you don't have to do anything manually and we'll take care of the reconciliation like tax reporting and we can do it in several modes like either per transaction with inventory tracking and all that stuff or with a like daily summarized uh, entries so that you kind of don't ha have each and every like sale in the books so a lot of customization is in there and yeah so we take the manual uh, part out of the bookkeeping routine and what I love about both of you guys, which is why it's so exciting to have both of you guys represented here, is that you both really care what people think in the end user experience. So I have not gone in, and Polly and I haven't spoken. It's probably been at least six months on this. Um, so we do have to get up or with the demo team or somebody to do that. But I actually, you know, they reached out and they're like, okay, what's, how do you feel about from the user experience, you know? long beforehand, probably about a year ago, and now it wasn't working with Canada at that point, but that user experience is really important to both you guys. And, and I absolutely love that, which is why I think it's great that you guys are both here because that is so important to each of you. So just thank you for that, for, for keeping that in mind. Um, and I can't wait to get in and see how Cinder works for, you know, with Canada, because again, it's Canada is so complex. So yeah, yeah. let's, let's get that done. Great, great, great. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, now, you guys are both going to be at Scaling New Heights, and we're hoping to try to get some, you know, some hype up here. So while we're talking about this next, I'd love to see who's going to Scaling New Heights. So let's see in the webinar chat if you're going. And where can they find you? Are you what do you want them to know about like the booth? Why should they come by and see you? So let's start with um, we'll, we'll go Ben cause Polly just spoke. So we'll go Ben again. Uh, yeah, I actually, I think we're like close to the food. Um, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent positive, but that's a good reason to come by is, uh, is after you're full and just about ready to go into like a, a food induced coma, uh, great to just like mosey on by the booth. Um, but, uh, I think one of the interesting things that we do at Keeper, um, and we don't do this exclusively, uh, but we do actually do a lot of uh, we we hire a lot of accountants internally. Uh, that's one of the ways that we make sure that we're building software that actually like actually makes accounting better is people who know how to do accounting um, uh, actually work inside the four doors uh, of Keeper. So, for example, I run our month end close every month. I did it over the weekend. Um, and we're long past the point where I would love to work with one of one of our many fine customers uh, to outsource that. But it's the only way that we get to have direct, tangible experience with our product. Um, so every month we come away with like 10, 15 things that we can make better about the product. Um, but that goes beyond just like me running our clothes. We have two former customers uh, who are at like current Keeper employees and will be at the booth. So you can come and talk to them and learn about their actual experience rolling out Keeper um, and what made them so excited about that that they wanted to come in and join Keeper internally. Oh, that's awesome. And you're an accountant as well too, Ben. That's your background is accounting. And Kenny, who is the, you guys are co-founders, right? Yes. Say, yeah, and Kenny is 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 programming. So I think that makes perfect. And I think that's really important. I'm glad you said that, that you do your own month and close because I work on my own books and I have two clients books who I work on and I still do get involved here and there because it's important to be able to know and to stay in it. Cause if you don't feel the pain, 
you don't know the pain's there to be able to help try to fix it. So I think that's important. Awesome. So thank you. All right. So hang up, Holly, the cinder side. This is what I love. Yeah, where are you going to be or approximately <laughs> where, and why should we, why should people go by? This I'll be there. Business. I'll be stopping by both booths, of course. Yeah. This is my bread and butter because I'm the channel marketing manager there. The channel being the accounting and bookkeeping channel. So I'm so glad you asked. Um, so when you walk in, we're on the like the top left hand corner. I know booth numbers exist, but like no one's going to remember them. Um, that being said, we do have a lot going on at our booth. Um, we are going to be throwing what we call the Cinder Sunset Boat Cruise on the Monday night. Uh, it's one of part of the River Arch Gateway Boat Tours. It's on the Mississippi River. And so a lot of people, you know, need to come to our booth just to get access to that. But not only that, when you come to our booth, we are going to do on the spot live demos. Our CEO and COO are going to be there. So if you want to, you know, get some ideas floating in their ears, they're all ears, I guess. <laughs> um, so everyone's, you know, kind of there not only to help you assist you answer any questions, but if you have any product ideas, that's what we're there for. You do need a wristband to get onto the boat cruise. They light up. They're worth it. They're fine. Not only that, we have a lot of like finicky swag. Like if you're like a, like you have to be using your hands or something, we got all that as well. Um, but yeah, just come meet the team, get a live product demo with one of our experts, tell our CEO what you want to see. I mean, what can possibly go wrong? Might fall off the boat cruise. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, Polly will be there. I mean, that's reason enough to come. There we go. There we go. Because yeah, with Polly living in Denmark, we don't get to see her often. So yeah, yeah. you got to be sure. So absolutely. <laughs> So that's, yeah, awesome. that's a great, great, great opportunity to really influence the development of the product as a product manager who really reaches out every day, week, months to, to really kind of hear the, uh, you know, in the field experience and uh, how, how the things are going there. So, yeah, that's just a perfect place to really influence the integration, the, the way integrations are built. And, uh, yeah, the thing is that. Well, there are a lot of integration tools, uh, but well, each integration has its own drawbacks, right? So maybe if, if anyone, if any one of you uses some kinds of integration, you probably know that, well, there is no ideal one, but we're trying to get to the ideal as close as possible, you know, listening to you all the time. So yeah, just come by and, you know, share what, what concerns you. Yeah, you'll, you'll never be able to make 100% of the people happy 100% of the time, but if you can get the majority, like, yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, it's... As Polly says, yeah, she's been doing that and listening for a long time because I've been working with Polly since before they started working on, on the Cinder product. So yeah, like I said, we go way back. So yes, awesome. Okay, so we've just got a quick question here. So let's pop in. Um, so um, Ashfaq, I hope I pronounced her name correctly. Um, Mohammed, your last name, I think I got that one right. But um, so he's asking for Polly or Kinga, can Cinder offer any certification for a bookkeeper accountant? And you saw a profile on LinkedIn that they claim that they're Cinder certified. Yes. So we did just recently launch a certification program, very recently, um, within the last couple months, I might add. And there are certain thresholds you need to surpass in order to become a Cinder certified partner. Um, and if you would like to learn more about that, we can actually you know, sit down one-on-one -on -one with someone on our team. Um, you need to have a minimum of three clients is kind of the basic one, uh, but there are a few more thresholds that you might be able to fit into if, if you want to get Cinder certified. So um, that's kind of the stepping stone into the certification program. We can go further. Like I mentioned, just let me know. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much, hopefully that answers that question vaguely, but enough. It's just so hard to say because it's not a one size fits all situation. Absolutely. But I think the main thing is with the certification is to be able to say that for clients, hey, we use a software or this software, we've got clients on it and we know it well, you know, I mean, to be able to work with it, you know, day in and day out. And I think that really helps build the trust with our clients on that because Cinder is something a little bit more front facing keeper, you know, maybe not the same thing um, because it's more in the back end. But now that said, Ben. Do you guys have a keeper certification? So we don't, we don't have one live yet. We are working on it. Um, awesome. It is, 
like hundreds of our customers have requested it at this point. So it is it is well in the works. Um, we I, I hope we have something to roll out later uh, later this summer, um, but uh, but not not quite just yet today. Well, you guys work on a lot. You guys get a lot of requests and you work on a lot all at once. It's like, you know, juggling, you know, those, those hundred balls at a time. So yeah, it's certain things just have to, you know, it's not their time yet. So that's great because, you know, although that might not mean as much for a client, we're like keeper, what's keeper, you know, we maybe don't want our clients to know really how much we use it in the back end or, or whatnot, but that's important for our team. So if you're looking at hiring, bringing somebody on, if they're already keeper certified, or if not, then that shows that that's the training to go through keeper, because I know right now, as I'm going through hitting one thing, I'm building training videos and whatnot that I want my team to go through and which means that you've just saved me some work so I think I'm going to stop doing that right now and focus on something a little more important then thank you yeah no that that's exactly right that's that's you, you hit the hammer on the head uh, or hit the nail on the head um the uh the two main things that we want to get out of that program are that the n plus first employee that you hire um can like you can help get them up to speed. You can just sit them down and say, this is a course, take this course, get certified, and then you'll know how to use the product that is the sort of core heartbeat of our month-end close. Um, and then number two is, uh, I mean, at this point, we have uh, thousands of practices on Keeper and um, and giving them the opportunity to hire from people who are Keeper certified, I think is another one of those passes that helps you make sure that you're finding the right candidates to bring in. Absolutely. And especially when that's such a core product. I mean, you know, if, if that's what you're using in your basic, you're going to be using that with every client, whereas center might be a little bit different. It's a little bit more niche that, you know, there's because we don't deal with a lot of that. You know, even using on the business importer, and I know we're not here to talk about that, but I've got, you know, we've got the four clients that we use that with because we don't really use a lot of clients that we're pulling the sales in that way. It's we're service-based clients. So, you know, they're not using things like that. So that might be a little bit more niche, but that's where it's actually even more important. And I love the fact that you guys um, are saying they've got to have three clients on it to be certified because it's one thing. I think all of us know that when we go out there, we can become certified in an app, but are we staying up with it? Are we using it with our clients? There's apps I'm certified with that I've never, I, I, I've never put a client on. I've meant to put a client on and I've never put a client on. So if you don't use the information, you lose it. So I love the fact that, that to be Cinder certified, you need to have that and you need to actually be using it because it makes that certification mean something. So kudos to both you guys. And then thank you. you. You saved me time and work all the time. So I'm glad you just saved me more work. Although creating work for the team. So I know Sandra's on the call and, and Leanne's here too. So they might be again groaning, but <laughs> it's all good. It makes us more efficient. Um, so another reason to pop by the booth of either of these guys, and if you're not going to be at scaling, because I didn't see a lot of people type in here that you're going to be at scaling. So we are sharing this out with everybody afterwards. But if you're not going to be there, you can still get involved. We will make sure that you have ways to reach out um, for Cinder and Keeper to book demos. But we also are having a contest that they are both sponsors in. And anybody who has probably seen us around, we've got the little the little um, beagle puppies um, and the little beagle plushies. They they are personal. I'm not going to bother going into why you guys can look us up or reach it afterwards. Um, but they are definitely a, a personal thing to us. And part of that is we are donating to Beagle Freedom Project. And these guys are part of it. So we are giving away a ton of prizes um, because of their sponsorship. We're giving away, there's an iPad, there's Google Nest, there's swag bags, really good swag bags we've pulled together um, and whatnot. And they are part of sponsoring this. So all you need to do to enter, if you're not at scaling, you can still enter the contest. Um, Leanne, if you can post, oh, she's already posted um, contest PNG. I think that is, if you open it, I think that's a QR code. There's an email going out, so you can definitely get involved. And if you're at the booth, we're have, or if you're at scaling, we are actually having a little bit of a puppy scavenger hunt, in which case they are going to have unique puppies at their booth along with the code so you can scan and enter um but they're going to be able to pick from one of their 
favorite people. I don't know how they're going to choose, but they get to choose at the end of the day who their puppy goes to. And so they're, oh, Cindy's got a beagle. She loves her little beagle. Is it one of our beagles or oh youngest daughter decided it was her puppy so we've got we've got people on here who have helped sponsor or who have helped yeah from connects perfect thank you guys um yeah so for every puppy that that is out there fifty dollars is donated to beagle freedom project so just know that by having a puppy you're helping with that and helping spread that word so they will have unique puppies so go by there grab that take the time to talk to them um put something so i know leanne do you have the yeah, and if you're already entered in the contest, certainly go ahead and enter again now um, because this one is going into scaling. And Leanne, do you happen to have that you can post the links to book a demo for those people that aren't going to scaling for either of them? If not, maybe Polly or Ben, if you guys have them, you can post it in the chat. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty easy for us. It's just keep like keeper.app. It's, it's pretty hard to... Okay. Uh, I, I will have choice words for my uh, website team if it's not easy to book a demo uh, just from our homepage, but uh, but I'll, I'll throw that in the chat as well. Awesome. Perfect. There we go. Now, again, if you're there now, if you're going to book a demo, how easy is it going to be to book a demo in the next 10 days? Is it going to be fairly easy or should people just wait until after scaling? I mean, you know, how much of your team is going to be still here to be able to do that? Because I don't want all of a sudden for people to get upset being like, we've tried to book a demo when we can't. Let's set their expectations. So, that uh, yeah, we definitely have capacity. Uh, we okay. we have, um, uh, up to, I think about half our team will, uh, half our sales team will be there. So the other half will be hanging back. So if you are not at the conference, you can still very much, uh, definitely come in and, and talk to some of the other uh, some of the other members who are who are holding the holding down the fort. Okay, and then what about for Cinder? Are you guys in the same boat that you'll have people back here to be able to yeah. do that? Or so we run a tight ship over here. You know, it's not all play. Not everyone gets to sit at the con no. So we are actually located globally. Um, we have a lot of people in Europe, um, and then myself in Canada, and a bunch in the U.S. So um, there's only a handful of us coming to Scaling New Heights. So there are a ton of us sitting around, sitting around, working hard, <laughs> yeah. and uh, we'll be able to take demos, answer any questions while they I sit just, around. <laughs> I was going to say, anybody who's who's sitting around will and watching this will probably have choice words for you afterwards. Going, do you know we actually do work for a living? You know, I'm in trouble. <laughs> yes. No, we know what you mean. Yeah, so that's great. So there's that. Now, um, yeah, is there any like anything else you like? There's no questions. Is there any questions that you guys have? We want to dig in. These guys are here. They'll answer the tough questions. Well, I while you guys are writing your questions, I do want to just say, like I mentioned the boat cruise earlier. I have the Luma link here. If you guys do want to, if you're coming to Scaling New Heights, just uh, you put it in there. Okay, perfect. But we still, you still have to come by. So what's the process on that? You've got to register and then still come by to collect the band after you've registered. Yeah, right? you don't want to be the only one not glowing on the boat, you know? <laughs> now, so let me ask, does Ben have his invite yet? Ben and Kenny are invited. Okay, and I was going to say. That is special they... because we don't actually have the capacity for app partners, but we did invite Ben and Kenny. I was gonna say that would be really mean to be talking about it here and and be yeah. like, yeah, you guys can imagine. Come. Well, thank you. And we just want to see you on the dance floor. If you <laughs> want to see Ben on the dance floor, <laughs> there we go. There yeah, we go. It, it will be hard to spot me on the dance floor because I actually won't be at scaling. Uh, we have a um, two conferences. Like Kenny will and Kenny, I assure you, much more fun on the dance floor. Uh, are but you going to be KX? I'm going to be KX. Okay, so yeah. uh, so it's just like. Bad, unfortunate conference timing uh, that there are these two conferences that overlap at the same time. But we have um, we have more plenty of uh, plenty of entertaining faces at at Scale and New Heights that will happily happily uh, take take my place. That's so that's funny. awesome, and I agree that I did see at CPB. I believe Kenny was on the dance floor. And I've not seen you on the dance floor, Ben, but people don't see me on the dance floor. I, 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 I will be at CPB dance. this year. That's that's for sure, though. You will be. Awesome. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it was such a last minute decision, like literally, I think, days ahead of time last year, maybe a week. But yeah, so you guys were the were definitely the the like the highlight of the conference for people with that. Now, Cinder is going to be at 
CBB this year as well too? We are. So our next few shows are, we're going to have, we're not physically at BKX, but if anyone on this or anyone that sees this is going, please go check out Jeannie Whitehouse's session. Um, she is going to be kind of giving you a rundown of her app stack and how she actually works. And she's, fun fact, she works in Napa Valley with wineries. So I mean, only the best information comes from people that drink a lot of wine, right? <laughs> so Here yes, we, we have Jeannie there. She's not just representing us, she's representing her brand, but um, we are part of her tech stack. So we will be coming up in conversation a little bit. So if you want to learn more, definitely go see her. And then we will definitely be at Ignite and then get connected, hopefully when they open up registration for us. But yeah, it's Cinder's first Ignite. So we're pretty excited about that as well. I will be there personally because it's just down the street. So. All right. So now I'm going to do the same thing to you guys. I already did it to Ben and, and Kenny and they've already got that set up. So here's my challenge for you guys for CPB. Come up with the Canadian pricing. <laughs> I launch it there. We don't care it's on par, but Canadians, it's very important. And, and Ben's heard this many times now. He can attest to it. The foreign exchange is crazy with us. So we expect to pay more than the US. So if the US is, you know, I don't, and I haven't looked at your prices lately, but let's say, you know, it's $49.99. We don't expect to pay $49.99 Canadian. But, you know, whether it be a 1.35 or 1.4, just give us consistent we do we do have canadian pricing so you can go ahead and check it out right now <laughs> so yeah beautiful have... beautiful and that's awesome because that probably came up paula you and i probably talked about that then a while ago that when it was there so i probably stressed that so that's absolutely awesome so thank you and and again i need to get on that if i don't make it to get if you guys are too busy for a demo poly we will connect up after scaling or with somebody else i would love you again because i love talking to you um again and catching up but anybody else so that i can see how it actually works but there we go so we have two apps that love the americans and love canadians like love north america so there we go so that's awesome so thank you made me happy it's already present um still no questions so let me ask you then, guys, um, for Cinder, there are several other e-commerce ones out there. So I'm thinking of like there's there's three main ones you guys included in the three main ones. Um, what and I'm not going to call out the names, but what would make what would differentiate you guys? I already know the answer, but I was. <laughs> yeah, I can, like, what would differentiate you guys? Like, who is your ideal client? Yeah, while Kim gets busy with the chat, because I see a lot of stuff is going on there, <laughs> I'll take on that one. So, um, yeah, the, the cool thing about Tinder is that it's compatible with the biggest number of platforms on the market. So it's just, King, I mentioned just a few ones like Shopify and Amazon and Etsy, but actually we're compatible with like WooCommerce and BigCommerce and Wix and like Magento. So a lot of, a lot of different stuff and as well as their payment processors, Stripe, PayPal and Square and like Authorize.net and Affirm and blah, blah, blah. So like 25 plus platforms in total that you can integrate. Uh, so yeah, that's the biggest number you can get. So if uh, if you are a like an owner of a business with a lot of uh, payment processors, go and check Cinder because well, that's the the biggest chances that you're going to cover everything is you know is Cinder. And the same if you're an accountant having lots of clients, again, so rather than using several apps, you know, for different platforms for different clients because they're using different systems, just better you know use one solution for everything because. We're going back to the point of certification because you know how it works once you onboard you know more and more clients you know the you know the m biggest amount of use cases so you're really comfortable with the software uh and we have quite a few unique things that uh, um other apps won't have like smart rules so there's like smart engine that you can actually use to say okay cinder so if you ever you know encounter a transaction that has this word in the description or is bigger than that amount or is you know customer name or, or that or that or the location of the customer like sale the shipping address was that so we, whatever that is do the following and you can build this kinds of rules and kind of modify everything while the app syncs so you don't really have to do things manually adjusting anything after the synchronization happens so uh we're there for for years on the market and we've encountered like thousands of unique use cases because each business sets up their even the same Shopify account in a thousand different ways. So we have this kind of customization available to cover everything. 
so yeah that's a good thing uh, about cinder and yeah we do both modes as i mentioned summarized and per transaction also which which is something not every app would give you the freedom with so these are just a few points i could go on and on and with the rollback so that you don't have to anything manually historicals imports and blah 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 but yeah i'll better <laughs> stop but that's because they have to come and see you we've just got to dangle that carrot right just enough for them to want to see you and book the demo or come and see you there no Absolutely. that's awesome we're thrilled to yeah to talk to you on at scaling new heights awesome perfect thank you and ben you are not the only one who does everything that you do. There's a few things that you have that I know that are unique. There's a few things that are like combination of a few apps, but why should people use you guys for their month end close slash productivity app? Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, and I think it's less like we, we see less, uh, less in the way of firms where it's like, I'm looking at Keeper for the, for X and I'm looking at, like this other other software also exactly for X. It's usually, we'll see a firm come to us and they're like, I've got ClickUp as my workflow solution. And um, and like I email and text my clients and I publish the management reports out of QuickBooks and I use books review as my file reviews and I store my files in Box and I track my time in Clockify and I chat with my team in Slack. And it's like, you end up with like 10 different things you need open to run a single month and close for a single client. And so the unique thing about Keeper is that we take all of that, and we combine it into one single tool to run your entire month and close end to end. So it's your management reporting, it's your client communications, it's your month end review uh, to catch coding errors, it's your core workflow solution, it's your CRM. Um, it helps you for the Americans in the room. It helps you manage your 1099 process. Um, so it really is designed to be the only place you need to go to run your entire month and close. Um, but and for the for the rare app that you still need to also use, we also have a robust integration with Zapier so that you can connect Keeper to the other business systems that you use. Well, and you can also piecemeal it because there's right now we are starting. There's only one piece I'm starting to use right now because I. It's just been a matter of, of, of time and there's certain things that I'm like, okay, I have to change my processes to work with it, but very soon, hopefully I won't have to change as many of my processes and because it is getting more and more robust, as you said, right, with all of that um, the, that's starting to come uh, and, and getting the feedback and listening to the feedback is becoming that. So you can use, we use Lysio as the CRM. I can still use Keeper to replace a couple of different apps without having to replace Lysio because Lysio works for what it is. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. But it doesn't mean that you have to be an all or nothing app, which is great with that too. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's one of the one of the other nice things about um, the way that our team works is we have a, a team of real humans who work with our customers to help them set Keeper up the right way. So they're using the things they want to, they're not using the things that they don't. And then we can also help train your staff to distribute that knowledge broadly so that when you do integrate Keeper in into your tech stack in whatever capacity that looks like, um, you know that that's getting standardized across your entire team and across your entire client base. Absolutely. And of course, you know, this is, you know, it's mastering modern bookkeeping. And I know we haven't really focused too much on the actual title. We've talked more about the apps, but I think you guys have heard is how this is mass helping us master modern bookkeeping. We are working in the cloud. We have so many different things. We've got our clients working in the cloud with, <laughs> excuse me, Amazon and Shopify. So we've got Cinder that takes care of bringing that information in and, and, automating that part of it and Keeper is going to automate the rest of it essentially um, which is is perfect because this is where we need to be because there's nothing more painful and I speak from experience is trying to work with the online bookkeeping you know whether it be and I can only speak personally from QBO because I that's all I use but I would imagine zero and fresh books and you know every anybody else who's who's in another online system still has the same frustrations if you use the online technology with older more manual or analog technology that we have it makes it frustrating and it doesn't pull it together nicely so both of you guys help pull things together really nicely which is great um 
So I am going to throw you guys on the hot seat and um, I guess we will go Polly first because we've got, or Kinga again, Cinder first because we've gone Ben first for a few times here. Um, I'd love to hear about your roadmap. What do you guys have coming that you guys can get people excited about? Um, yeah. And I, 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 I will not say anything because I know with Keeper, there's stuff that I know that I don't know is public. So I'm not, I'm going to leave it all to you when we get to Keeper. Don't worry. I'm not going to say a word, but yeah. What is coming that, that we can excite people about? Kinga. This, this is all Polly. This is her. Polly. This is all right. her, her zone here. Okay. Yeah. Polly, go then. Uh, yeah, sure. We have a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, we've just released the daily summary synchronization for Zero. So if any of you use Zero, so yeah, you are welcome to try it out. It's also compatible with all the 25 platforms. So um, yeah, go ahead and try it anytime you need it. Um, we are right now working on the very painful piece uh, for accountants. I mean, that's a huge pain point that we keep hearing about. Uh, it's the revenue recognition piece. So if any of you is like subscription based business, uh, you know what I'm talking about those like subscriptions like throughout months and you have to kind of do a lot of calculations in the excels to make sure it all you know sums up. So yeah, we are going to um, offer a way to automate this. Um, yeah, so this is kind of the, the biggest thing we're working uh, on right now in terms of the like features. Um, a lot of like smaller stuff is going on, but I would say that that's the, the biggest one. So yeah, if you're subscription based, if you have online transactions, well, anticipate. And that Ilya and I spoke about that last scaling and he kind of, I don't know what it looks like now. He was just talking about what he envisioned and I don't think there was even a mock-up to look at yet, but that's really, that's, that's what I think you're talking about is what he spoke. So I'm excited to, to see how that's come because that it's, it's, yeah. I definitely saw a lot of value because Ilya and I sat down and Ilya is the, the um, CEO COO. and founder, COO, okay. COO and founder and co-founder okay, yeah, CEO and founder of, of Cinder. And yeah, so that was, uh, we sat down, it was about an hour, um, hour and a half, him and I sat down and kind of went through that. So yeah, it's really exciting. So I'm glad to see that that's finally coming to fruition and I can't wait to see what it looks like and yeah, it should be extremely valuable. So that's awesome. Um, ben. Keeper, what do you guys have that you can share on the roadmap coming up? And no time, we're not going to make these guys commit to any time zone or to any timelines, no deadlines. I promise you that. So, um, yeah, just like Cinder, we've got a lot of stuff that's exciting and in the works. And I think some of them are more exciting to people who are existing customers. Others are more exciting to people who are not yet customers. I'll speak to the slice of our audience uh, that is Canadian. So I get the sense that's a lot of uh, the attendees on this call here. Uh, so two really exciting things coming up um, that should be coming up in the next like week to two or three weeks or really not a long time to wait for these. Uh, so with any luck uh, coming this Thursday, we will have uh, full production availability for non-calendar fiscal years. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely interesting learning lesson for us is just how, just how, uh, how frequent a non-calendar fiscal year is for Canadian businesses. Uh, and of course, since Keeper is both a workflow solution, or is a workflow solution, a file review solution, and a management reporting solution, that really touches a lot of different parts of the app. So it's like quarterly clients need to start according to their closing cadence, um, and your file reviews need to have a uh, calendar, uh, or sorry, a fiscal year to date. So you're you're not like checking for inconsistencies from a prior fiscal year in case you change coding treatments for different vendors. Uh, and then, of course, management reporting needs to happen on a fiscal year instead of a calendar year. So it's been a huge undertaking for the team um, for close to the last month, uh, but we are knocking on the door uh, of uh, of releasing that hopefully this coming Thursday. So we're very excited about that. That's awesome. I can't wait to play with that then because, yeah, I I didn't realize, I don't think until it actually was the conversation between Sherry Lee, myself, and you, I didn't realize that that the U.S. was all a calendar year close. I'm like, what? I mean, that's so, just not, to actually have a calendar year close here for corporations doesn't happen because yeah. the accountants are too busy. They're like, no, we're not going with the December 31st close. The accountants get to pick it basically. Yeah, so it's um, it's it's not, I mean, 
a lot of nonprofits in the U.S. Um, are are have non-calendar fiscal years, and it's not unheard of by any means to have a non-calendar fiscal year. In fact, my dad's business, for whom our business is named, um, has a non-calendar fiscal year. So it's something somewhat ironic uh, that we have taken this long to support it. But anyways, excited to uh, excited to roll that out. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, in the next couple of days. Um, and then the other main uh, improvement we're making that I think will have a lot of broad applicability, but some specific, uh, s- specifically beneficial uh, things for Canadians. Uh, we're working on the ability to show and hide columns inside of the file reviews, um, which is going to let us pull in a lot more dynamism into what kinds of things you can review. Uh, so I know a big one being like exchange rate, uh, so that you can check for uh, which uh, which currency a tr- uh, transaction is coming in from. So all of that logic to better support some Canadian specific file review reports uh, should be coming out in the next uh, in the next month or so as well. No, and that's awesome. And just to bring up though that that actually now that we are getting more and more, I know that US is the common um, dollar that most people do business businesses under, but you've probably got again, the US is now doing, you know, they might have somebody who's doing business with somebody in Canada or doing business with, you know, somebody overseas, which does have a different exchange rate. So although it's more relevant and happy for Canadians, Americans will definitely be able to take advantage of that too, just not as common as us probably. <laughs> exactly. No, that's awesome. So those, yeah, those are good. Those are some really good things, you know, that are coming up. Um, Yeah, really, really exciting on that. And I just, again, you guys listen, if there is feedback, get that out because they listen. This is this is how the apps know what's important and where to put where to invest their time and money from. So if they hear it from one person and they hear some uh, something else from a hundred people, they're going to put their their thoughts and their money and resources into what the hundred people want. So speak up because that's how we help you guys. Like, is that helpful? Like, do you guys both have feedback buttons on your websites and a way to get feedback? I'm sure you do. I know you do. It's why I'm asking. We do. Um, I think actually it's an interesting time to share. Um, uh, so Cinder and Keeper actually share a common investor. Uh, so actually two, uh, but one's more relevant for this call. Uh, so uh, so we both went through a startup accelerator called Y Combinator. Uh, they also uh, created, or they were also the first backers of companies like that you've heard of, like Airbnb and Gusto and Stripe um, and lots of other um, uh, lots of other really amazing companies. Uh, but their motto, uh, I, I really like, and I think uh, the successful companies that have come out of YC have really embraced it at a deep level throughout their company. Uh, it's make something people want. Um, and it's like really simple, but at the end of the day, it's all that a business is, um, is like listening to your customers and building the things that they ask you for, because that's literally all a software business is. Um, in many ways, it is a much simpler business than uh, than lots of the businesses that your clients run. Uh, and, and probably even than the businesses that, that y'all run as well. Uh, but so I think we try to really take that part and every single week make sure that we are consciously focused on what are the things that our customers are asking for um, and uh, and how can we how can we get those into the product ASAP? Honestly, I love a chill model like that. Like I was thinking, I was like, Cinder's motto should just be, it works. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I think that while we're talking about that, it's it's great to get feedback. It's great to do that. But one thing that I think to set expectations for, you know, the people out there, sometimes what sounds like a really easy ask is not easy in the back end. I took programming because my mother forced me to take programming in high school. And this is mid eighties. I had to learn string, convert it to binary, convert it to punch cards. It took all semester to learn how to do a 12 question questionnaire with, you know, rant, like to, to, to put the, you know, the, if then scenarios. And I walked out of there with a 52%. And this is, I want to say, I think 80, Five, and I said, computers suck. They are not the wave of the future. So I feel for you guys in the programming because I know how easy it is to think, isn't this easy? It's not. The back end, it might seem easy, but it's like looking for that needle in a haystack. And yeah, and, and then finding there's two needles in the haystack instead of one. So please, when you do the ask, keep that in mind um, that it is 
it, it, it might be an easy ask. You guys are working the back end. So I'd like to ask both of you guys. So we'll go to, to Cinder first. And how do you guys prioritize your, your customers' requests? Um, Steve has asked that. And then there's a question in here that we'll get ask to that. Polly well. again. <laughs> All right, yeah. Polly. It's a huge like process. I mean, we have a team of product managers and kind of we gather this feedback and that's kind of sequentially uh, doing this like every uh, few weeks and we kind of go and uh, uh, see how many customers request this. We also investigate how many users we have right now who are about to need this feature and kind of there are a lot of factors to really take into consideration. Uh, yeah, but at the very end, it all, I guess, comes to um, the number of people and the like relevance to, to the market that we are working with and we're focusing on. So yeah, for us, it's e-commerce uh, and SaaS in the first place, uh, you know, with a strong, strong attention to accounting professionals. So if you are either of those, well, just know that your feedback will be prioritized and the whole team will be sitting there figuring out how, like, what's the best way to do thing you're asking. And, you know, uh, yeah, so just uh, feel free anytime to, to share because, yeah, that's what we need the most. Um, and again, yes, that's the legacy of Y Combinator. And um, that's the kind of one of the, um, like the core things and values in our company that, yeah, we really are doing things based on feedback all the time. And sometimes, that's a kind of feature of a startup. So when you're small and you're kind of doing things uh, based on customers' requests, but then the bigger you grow, you kind of, you know, you became more robust, slower. So we're trying to stay away from this, you know, as far as possible away from this. And we're still uh, focusing on customer feedback, you know, implementing on, only the things um, you guys need. So yeah, that's the process basically. Awesome. Ben? We'll throw that so, so. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I really only have a very slight modification to add on top of uh, of what Polly said, because the reality is prioritization is simple, but it's not easy. So um, so by simple, I mean, like, they're really, it's not a crazy complicated algorithm to figure out how do we prioritize stuff. And it's a function of who needs the stuff, um, how painful is it, um, and then how hard is it for us to do? So that's the one other piece, right? It's like, ultimately, it's this like matrix multiplication of um, of, of like cost benefit, uh, where we incur the costs and then the benefits are, we can make a better product for more of our customers. Um, but so ultimately that, that activity of doing that over and over again, um, is, is not, it, it's, it's not like so complicated, but the devil is in the details. Uh, and so a big example of that is like, okay, if we have this feature that's like everyone wants it, but it's also devilishly complicated uh, to implement. Can we talk to our customers and say, would like this th this thing that's like 80% of the feature accomplish 80% of your pain points or like 100% of your pain points for 80% of the customers? Uh, so it's a, that exercise of like iterating down and scoping down, how, how do we do the thing that is the 80%, the, the solution for 80% of our customers um, is the way that we can continue to ship high velocity improvements so that we can make 10x the total number of improvements rather than just getting super, super bogged down in like one one tiny edge case um, that really impedes the uh, ability to ship new product. Well, and, yeah, and that's really good to bring up because let's say there's something that you've got less people requesting, but you're like, we can bang that off in a couple of hours. You know, that might take priority just simply because you can bang that off quicker whereas the other one might be a six month undertaking right so yes you've got to balance that out so that was really good to bring up because I think a lot of us on this end again we're like why can't it be simple I mean Steve put up the date format that's a Canadian pain is a date format Canadians were like month day year and the Americans are opposite I think, but you actually are talking to uh, you actually are talking to two companies whose engineering presences are largely not American. Uh, so <laughs> our our uh, our engineering team is mostly based in South America, um, and I believe Cinder Yell's engineering team is mostly based in Europe. Is that right? So yeah, months coming like years, year, month, day makes sense, or like like the, the way Americans do it of like month, day, year makes no sense whatsoever, but it is just like the way that we do it. But anyway, so our engineering team is actually very, very well aware of, uh, of the weirdness of, of date formatting. Um, and so that is actually something that we consider inside of Keeper. You know, that's yeah. Cause Canada, we're month, day, year, that's it. But, but I think the it's day 
month year is common in the States, I think, or at the years that I can't remember which one, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> yes, that's a pain. And you're right. It's depending on the country that you're in. And I think a lot of that might pull, and I might be wrong from this, and then we'll get to the um, Oksana's question in here, but I do believe that a lot of that pulls from QuickBooks. And guess what? In QuickBooks, we can change it. So even if you guys have it to pull from QuickBooks when you're integrating, that might be an easier workaround to pull from how we have it in QuickBooks. I don't know. So I actually looked this up actually on our client list. We do do like uh, like the, the three the three character abbreviation um, for due date. So it's like JUL is July, uh, JUL 15. Um, so so we so do that. Do that. As long as you know, yeah, you don't need to go 07. Like you're like 06, 07. You're like, is that July 6th? Is that, you know, June 7th? That's perfect. There you go. Do the the the, the letters instead of the numbers. Perfect. Yeah, the solution to this problem is clearly to only have things be due in the second half of the month. Uh, so like my birthday <laughs> is October 29th. So there's no ambiguity, 10, 29 or 29, 10. There you go. There we go. There we go. That's it. All right. So Oksana has got a question and this is um, a keeper question. She says, will keeper support the export of balance sheet and income statement with notes to Excel? It's crucial for further um, analytics and client discussion in her practice. Uh, yeah, so not something that we currently support today. We are working on uh, a product or a project we call internally Metrics 2.0 um, that allows for, uh, it's going to allow for a ton more flexibility, um, including the ability to export your financial statements directly to Excel. Right now you can, we have like a table-based system so you can copy and paste it in, uh, but we're working on some better, uh, some better architecture to, to support that more broadly. Awesome. No, and that's perfect because I've seen, I'm, I've not gotten as far as using the reporting because the last little while, it's just not been good for me to introduce anything new with everything I've got. But I've seen those reports. Sherry shows me those reports that you guys have pulling and she loves those reports. And I have to say that I love what I've seen as well, too. So to add that extra flexibility, especially when we look at, you know, chat GPT, which is definitely emerging technology. We spoke about that yesterday in our um, work call that we had that you can go in there and actually pop in information from a balance sheet or a profit and loss. I'm going to preface this with, do not put your client's information in there. Keep client business name, all of that confidential, but you can pop that in there and you can say, summarize it. Now, I still will preface that with, you need to read what it's summarizing to make sure that it's accurate because you're responsible for putting that out there. But you know, Steve, who's on the call, he and I were talking about this yesterday. Like it can save potentially 15, 20 minutes per client just going through having something like that, do that and to be able to do it, copy, paste that in, make your notes, make it sound more like you and whatnot and just edit like that would be ideal. Now, did I hear a rumor and I could be completely wrong. So if this is not out there, just shoot me afterwards. Were you guys talking about implementing ChatGPT somehow in with Keeper? Uh, so it, it's definitely we got a lot so. of yeah we no it's it's not a well it's not a rumor um it is a, a private alpha is what it is um and we okay. have a so maybe uh, you mentioned it to me and yeah no so it's it's not a rumor um definitely we're strong believers in the um the transformative power of of what this AI can do and I like I already feel myself sinking into marketing rhetoric which I like I hate but um. So we we try and keep the like the productivity first and the marketing second um, to really where we think where we think the like current AI tools can be most broadly applicable today, or at least where we're most excited about them is in the uh, is in the bank feed. Um, and it's yeah. in like because e everything it's like bedrock and Cinder does all the stuff that doesn't hopefully have to make its way to the bank feed, but it's like what goes into your ledger in the first place um, is ultimately the that kind of like bedrock that we build the rest of the clothes on top of. Um, and so giving giving users the ability to use AI to help better inform and more quickly process transactions inside of the bank feed um, is really really where we're focusing uh, our, our sort of R&D efforts uh, with AI today. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that you guys do wanna pop by the booth to look at this one of the really cool features is that yes you can ask client questions from stuff in the bank feed first before it goes into the book so go back go by and see them um absolutely and so just 
we're at the top of the hour. So is there any last minute um, information that you guys want to give? Um, let's go Cinder first. Other than just go buy your booth and book a demo and do it. Yeah, and we'll tell you how we work with ChatGPT as well uh, over there. <laughs> so don't miss that. Perfect. So you guys are, yes, you guys are already looking I mean, at working with that too. I mean, I guess you'd say anyone who went through Y Combinator would would definitely work with ChatGPT. I mean, that, that's kind of what you're not awesome. Okay, that's good to know. That's, so that's how you have to go by the booth to say, how can you use, you know, the power of ChatGPT with Cinder to be able to hopefully alleviate some pain points or not necessarily maybe alleviate, alleviate pain points because maybe you didn't know it was a pain for your clients, but give more value to your clients with those insights. Absolutely. Um, ben, any last minute things that you want to let anybody know? Everyone yeah. Uh, I mean, the last thing I'll mention is just stop by the booth, take a demo. Um, and we really pride ourselves on our, our, our desire to show value first before we charge for anything. So uh, Keeper has a free trial, but not only that, we'll work with you, like our team will work with you to help you get Keeper set up so that you can see if Keeper's a good fit and try to run uh, a month and close with several of your clients before committing to a paid subscription. Awesome. Perfect. And I will so say that everyone I brought over when I like just met Keeper and like in like the last little bit, everyone I brought over still thanks me. So like they're actually a big deal, especially with the bookkeeping and on and I mean, I guess coming to Cinder also, since I joined, everyone's like, this is an amazing product. You're going to love it. So there's a lot of value in both. And I definitely think that, you know, you're missing out by at least not taking a look. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time um, to Kinga, Polly and Ben. Thank you very much for all of your time for those that have been here live. We will be sending this out. We will make sure that the links are in here to be able to book if you're not going to be at scaling. If you are going to be at scaling, go get the demo there or at least watch somebody else have a demo and then book a demo yourself. Because what I love is if somebody else having a demo and I just kind of sit back and watch, they might ask questions that I might not have even have thought of. So there's still value in I guess, demo creeping. <laughs> so that's going to be a new thing. We're going to start demo creeping now, but absolutely do that and um, go by. And again, they're in control of who gets their puppies. So if you want their puppies and they've got special puppies. So anybody else, we have the little puppies, they have bigger special beagle puppies. Um, so you're definitely going to want to suck up to somebody at the booth. Um, so again, we'll be Ben, we'll be Kenny or somebody else and Polly or King. I don't know that you, you got to be nice to everybody to make sure that you know, you might be the, the one who gets their pup. So awesome. thank, thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day and hope to um, hope to see everybody at scaling. Bye, well, thank you. Take care. Bye.